center bit out of the middle of it. Some food call this paradise. Oh. G'day guys and welcome to this week's episode. In this week's episode, we're leaving the van behind and living out of the trusty car. So we got one double swag between the five of us. Come and check out how we sleep. But before that, I'm gonna tell you all the stuff that we needed, all the stuff that we took, um, all the food that we took, our method of cooking it. Um, when I was looking at trying to get information for Steep Point, there wasn't a great deal out there to find out what you can take and what you can't take to make it stay to make your stay that little bit easier so we really wanted to take the caravan out and there was a few people that took 19 foot caravans out but there wasn't any information out there to say whether or not you could or you couldn't and i'm going to give you that information at the end of this video because some people have and some people haven't and we'll give you the reasons of what we did and why we did it so come with us and we'll show you what we do. Ew. So we've just got to Hamlin Pool Station and we're going to be staying out here for the night just before we head out to Steep Point. So we've just rocked up to Hamlin Bay Station. Done a quick setup of caravans there, the cars all ready to go and it's only 20 to 3 so we're going to go and find some water so we just rocked up to hamlin pool and i didn't know about this place i've been coming up this way for many of years being from wa the world heritage listing of the shark bay area is helped by the hamlin pool by having all these microbial mats and stromololites I don't know how to say it, but um, you can have a read. I'll post it up over me talking here. Um, but yeah, it's pretty amazing that this little piece of beach holds so much key to the past and to the life here in Shark Bay. So it's only a short walk out to the beach from the car park. And there's a jetty out here that um, we'll jump on and, and have a look. But... It's a beautiful day. The weather looks amazing. There's hardly any wind here. So exciting times ahead. Just arrived out here to the jetty. And unfortunately, it's destroyed. Uh, the cyclone come through and has torn the whole center bit out of the middle of it. And I believe that it's damaged some of the, uh, the life that is around here as well that is so important to this area. So it's amazing what Mother Nature can do. It it uh, takes back what it wants, doesn't it? But we'll check it out anyway. When I'll be coming home Then I'll be at your door And I'll be coming home I plan to let you know The longing of my heart The wish I carry high Whenever we're apart 
So because it was pretty hot and uh, you're not allowed to swim around Hamlin Bay pool there, whatever it's called, the Hamlin Pool, uh, we decided to go just for a leisurely 35, 40 kilometer drive and we're here at Shell Beach and uh, they're putting in some pretty cool structures. Um, that'll look cool when it's finished. Um, but yeah, we want to hit the water, so we've uh, we've come down here. We're going to go for a swim. So this is absolutely amazing. It's just full, obviously, of shells. Been Shell Beach, but it is compacted that hard. I don't know if it's if someone's done something to it or or what, or if it's just normal. But there's all these waves. I don't know if it's naturally formed or not, but the ground is that hard. It's like a highway. It's bloody amazing. But check out this water. Oh, can't wait to get my head in there. Look at it. It is absolutely flat as no wind at all. Let's get wet. Phew! Just what this family needed. A swim in a beautiful I beach. Cold. Some would call this paradise. Mummy. Paradise. <laughs> that was Shell Beach. If you're on your way to Monkey Mire or Denham or Useless Loop or anywhere up this way, stop in and have a swim here. It is amazing. Back to the caravan. Yeah. Alright, so it's currently 7.30 and we are packing because we are leaving the caravan here at Hamlin Pool Station Stay. Um, so it's $30 a night to stay here and it's $15 a night for your um, just to leave it here if you want to go to Steep Point. So we're packing all of our stuff from the caravan and putting it in the car so that we can go camping. For we got Saturday and Sunday night booked out at Steep Point. So we're uh, slowly getting all of our stuff together. But we got head torches, all of the fishing gear that was already in here. So we have the swag up there and our camp chairs. Hope you can see that. So the fridge is full of all of our food that we need to take and in here is all of our cooking stuff and plates and knives and forks so this is the kitchen side obviously we've got the tent 
table, we've got the floor mat, we've got the induction cooker which will go back in this drawer once we finish packing it, but we're ready to go off grid camping in the swag. So I'm sleeping in the swag with two kids and Jade's going to be sleeping in the back of the car which we'll show you that when it's all set up. Alright so I thought I'd just run through um, of let me start that again. <coughs> oh. <coughs> <laughs> All right. So I've just finished packing the car the night before we head off to Steep Point tomorrow. Uh, it's getting a little bit late. It's getting on. But I just wanted to quickly share with you guys what we've taken. So you've got to imagine it's not your average camping trip that you can just take everything that you normally go camping with from home, pack it in a trailer and head out. So we obviously live on the road, weights are a big factor, we've got to make sure that we're not too heavy, um, not taking stuff that we don't normally take and, sorry, that we don't normally use and keeping things to a minimalist life while living on the road. So going off grid isn't like what you'd normally do when you're at home. So we've got a floor mat, a sea gear floor mat. So that went in so that we can put the swag on that, we can stand on that during the day and whatnot. All of our camp chairs, so obviously we've got camp chairs so they come with us. We've got one double swag, so we've got an Oztrail double swag that we've got. That lives on top of my car all the time anyway, just in case of an occasion like this that we want to get away. We've got the kids, we're taking their small blankets because it's quite hot and they won't need too much of a big blanket so we've got the small blankets uh, there is a sweet uh, there is a sleeping bag in the swag so that can come with extra warmth if we need it we've got our big doona cover from our bed now um, that's going to be used for jade as a bit of a mattress slash blanket we've got five pillows going in we've got our little stool that we're taking because the car is obviously quite high Jade's a midget, but she needs a stool. Our table, so just our normal fold up table that we've got here anyway. Lots of bug spray. All of our bowls, cutlery, plate, all of our utensils and stuff that we use to eat off. I've got a plastic set from Big Dub or Target or whatever it was that lives in the car anyway, so that when we go out for lunches on the beach or whatever, we've got all that stuff in. Uh, induction cooktop, now that lives in the car anyway for that exact reason as well. Head torches. I've got a bunch of head torches. They are the um, LED lenses. For me, they're the best head torches that you can get. Again, not sponsored. Working on a mine site. Thank you. A big floodlight that we um, that we got. Uh, LED floodlight. Now that's got the ability to have the orange light on there for no bugs. All of the boat gear is living in the car anyway so that the car is self-sufficient with all the boat gear so we can get the boat in and out everything works on it everything's inside the car all of my recovery gear all of my spares fuses and stuff like that that's all in the car my tools are in the car everything like that's in the car so we've got all that already i've got two one kilo packets of squid and one kilos of muleys that we're going to take out there for bait. I filled up, so fuel filled up at the Overlander. We've driven back into Hamelin Station, uh, which is about 30, 40 k's, and then the trip in, adventuring, and then um, obviously back home. So I've got about 220 to 230 litres of fuel diesel in the car. So we'll let you know how much we use when we're finished. Then food, so obviously breakfast, lunches and dinners, and snacks, especially for the kids. So we've got, you know, your normal, you've got two loaves of breads, we've got um, some crumpets for cereal, uh, for breakfast, we've got some burger buns, we've got some banana bread, two litres of milk, and we've got sausages, burger patties, chopped, we've got Alfredo pasta packets, everything's just quick and easy, fry it up on the induction cooker, and easy to easy to um, eat, easy to cook. Water, so my car has 150 litres between the two tanks, one on the headboard, one underneath. So that's full of drinking water slash general use water. We've also got a 12 pack of uh, 600 ml water bottles that we're gonna take out with us as well. So that's, it's pretty basic. We've got all of our clothes. Now we use our reusable shopping bags because we don't have backpacks and stuff like that. So we use our reusable shopping bags that we're gonna house all of our clothes in and put them in the car 
and then yeah we can bring them back and use them for shopping but that's just about it i think i believe so that's all the stuff that we're taking and that's all the stuff that's in the car um so not much um but we'll let you know how we go with it all and we'll come back with you of what we miss and what we'd like and stuff like that cheers good morning wow 6.54 and we are ready to go. The car is packed. She's full. It's all uh, just clothes and pillows on this side. Uh, the other side's just all cooking stuff, uh, food and, and whatnot. Um, I'll show you that. So we've got our little step because it's too high. And uh, food, food cooking and boat gear and obviously the fridge is full ready to go seven o'clock steep point here we come so the van is going to stay here um so it's 30 dollars for last night uh, no power no water hookup and for when we leave and we go spend two nights at steep point it's 15 dollars a night just to store the caravan here but obviously with no one in it um the flies are very friendly so it's going to be interesting with no caravan how we go out in the bush let's go to steep point Finished on the seal road, we've hit the corrugations, we're gonna let our tires down so that it's a nice smooth ride. Ew. and I'm gonna let them down to about at the moment 30 psi and probably about 30 on the back as well and we'll see how that goes if it's no good then we'll stop again and, and lower them again all right so haven't had the car for that long haven't done many corrugations or anything like that yet and steep point is going to be the first tester and I'm still learning the car the weight of it, tyre pressures, what works and what doesn't. Now I've had cruisers and patrols my whole life and I know what tyre pressure works for them. Um, this is a lot different, it's a lot heavier, it's a lot bigger. So we're still learning and um, yeah, we're just seeing what works as we go. So it's nine o'clock. We've had to stop for breakfast. The kids have felt like they haven't eaten in 10 years. So Jade, what are you gonna whip up? Bacon and eggs. Bacon and eggs on the road. Is that what we're having? Yeah. Um, so we are doing this trip, this little day trip. We're gonna stay the night, but we have the Inch family. Hello. They're another traveling family. Um, they've been on the road for about a year or so and they have their 200 series Land Cruiser and we're all going out to Steep Point. Tanya's gonna fly the drone, get some epic shots and the kids, well they're just throwing rocks into the water. Great location. Ew. I don't know what it means, but there's a smile. Up 
up on your face And I see something shimmering in your eyes And they say if you want a glimpse the future you need space And you said you'll put down your morning guns Would you follow me to one Righto guys, we're going to leave this one here, we are letting the tyres down a little bit more from here on just past this little causeway, it's all the uh, sand and whatnot. so we're going to head out to false entrance, check out the blowholes, make our way through all the way to the most westerly point of mainland Australia and then come on back to our campsite at Shelter Bay. So I hope you can tune in next week and watch all the action out here at Steep Point. Yew. Right, so Chris has just told me that we've got a leak underneath the car, so we jumped out and had a look and there's a hole in our water tank. This is the sort of stuff that can happen, so the trailer has snapped the new bolts and it's pretty much knackered the trailer. Well, there you have it. Back to sleeping in the back of the car. I see someone waiting